Hello, my name is Roisin and today I'm going to talk to you about 11 books that are coming out in October, November and December this year, about which I am intrigued, excited, uh, potentially planning to read fairly soon. Most of these books are coming out in October so I may not have done a great amount of research properly um, into the latter part of the year so if there are any that I've missed that you think I would be interested in please do let me know in the comments down below. Most of these are novels and I think there is one non-fiction. I haven't included short story collections although there were several of them. I'm trying to keep this video a little shorter than it usually is. I'm going to do this in order of months but not in order of the days they're coming out but I will leave them in the description properly in order of the date they're coming out with links to them so you can find out more about them. Um, so everything, all that information will be in the description because I forever forget to tell you the dates so it's just easier for me to put them in the description and then you can like check back uh, if you need to. So the first one I'm going to talk to you about is Let Us Descend by Jasmine Ward. Jasmine Ward wrote Sing Unburied Sing um, and several other books but Sing Unburied Sing is the only one that I have read and I absolutely loved it. I think her writing is just stunning, so masterful, so um, atmospheric uh, and so moving. Uh, one of the, I don't cry very regularly at books but I cried at Sing Unburied Sing. And Let Us Descend is historical fiction um, and if you've watch this channel you know that historical fiction is a genre that I have an interesting relationship with but I do most of the time enjoy. This is set in the United States during American slavery um, about a young girl who travels from the Carolinas to the slave markets of New Orleans and into the fearsome heart of a Louisiana sugar plantation. She's the daughter of an enslaved woman, woman and the enslaver who owned her mother and she seeks comfort from the memories of her mother and the stories of her African warrior grandmother as she is forced to march through the southern United States. She opens herself to a world beyond this one, one teeming with spirits of earth and water, of myth and history, spirits who nurture and give, and those who manipulate and take. Um, and you know, again, if I've watched this channel at all, that I love ghost stories and stories that involve myth in, um, not always, but stories that have elements of the mythic, the folkloric, as part of their storytelling. Um, and I think this one is going to be really great. Sing on Buried Sing is also a ghost story, so I know that Ward does that atmosphere brilliantly, um, and I'm excited to read another one from her. Another one from a author that I have read from before is Disobedient Bodies Reclaim Your Unruly Beauty by Emma Dabbery. Um, this is the only non-fiction on this list and Emma Dabbery wrote Don't Touch My Hair and What White People Can Do Next and I really really loved Don't Touch My Hair. I think that Debbery is a really great writer, uh, great at um, introducing like systemic issues and making things um, more wider than the individual because I'll uh, will tell you what this book is about but I think that it could be in another writer's hand fairly individualistic but I have a feeling Dabbery won't will go deeper. What I loved about Don't Touch My Hair is that it didn't feel like a primer or baby's first um, book on this topic and I think that that is something that I'm always looking for. I don't like things that are too um, surface level. We spend a lot of time trying to improve our defects according to society's ideals of beauty but these ideals are often reductive, tyrannical and commercially entangled and are imposed on us by oppressive systems and further strengthened by our conditioned self-loathing. It accompanies The Cult of Beauty, a major exhibition at the Welcome Collection in autumn 2023. Um, so it is in relation to a collection at the Welcome, uh, to a exhibition at the Welcome Collection which is a history of medicine museum and library in London. I do have a video where I go there which I will leave linked in the card above but perhaps I'll have to go and see this Cult of Beauty exhibition. As I said it could be seen to be individualistic about releasing the individual from this Cult of Beauty but I think that Emma Dabry will do a good job about making it more systemic, collective and um, movement oriented rather than individual oriented. Next one that I think sounds like wild and like a really fun romp. Um, I love the cover, it's campy and I'm really kind of intrigued by it for that reason and that is Luda by Grant Morrison and this is a kind of uh, I think a dark magical realist story about drag queens in Glasgow. It's got a kind of all about Eve vibe about it as well. Um, so it is about Lucy LeBang, who is a star for decades, a fl this flamboyant drag artist has cast a spell over screen and stage. Now she's the leading lady in a smash hit pantomime. When Lucy's co-star meets um, with a mysterious accident, a new ingenue shimmers onto the screen and Lucy is immediately smitten with the fantastically beautiful Luda and her sinister charm. Lucy, Luda begs Lucy to share the secrets of her, of her stardom and reveal the hidden tricks of her trade. For Lucy LeBang is a mistress of the glamour, an arcane discipline that draws on sex, drugs and the occult for its trance-like transformative effects. But as Lucy tutors her young protege, their fellow actors and crew 
members begin meeting with untimely ends. Now Lucy wonders if Lucy Luda has mastered the glamour all too well. This just sounds like such, so much fun and like such a ridiculous romp over the top and camp and I think that this could be really good fun and I really want to read it. Another one by a well-loved writer is Family Meal by Brian Washington. I haven't actually read any Brian Washington before but this the synopsis of this one sounds really really intriguing um, and I think I would um, and I think it sounds the most up my street. I think this one might be slightly ghosty as well, from what I remember. Growing up, TJ was Cam's boy next door. When Cam needed a home, TJ's parents took him in. Their family bakery became Cam's safe place. Years later, Cam's world is falling apart. The love of his life, Kai, is gone, but his ghost keeps a wanted Cam and won't get let go. And Cam's not sure he wants to let go, not sure he's ready. When he has a chance to return to his hometown, he works in a gay bar, clinging on in a changing city landscape. Back in the same place as TJ, they circle each other warily, their banter electric with an undercurrent of betrayal drawn together despite past and current drama. Family is family, but TJ is no longer the same person Cam left behind. This is a story about how the people who know us the longest can hurt us the most, but how they can set the standard for love and, their, and by their necessary pro presence create a family. I'm intrigued. Um, I think that it's going to be quite emotional um, and I have heard just such good things about Brian Washington's writing um, that I am looking forward to trying one for the first time. Again a writer that I haven't read from yet but I definitely want to is Kay Ming Chang who wrote Bestiary and their new novel Organ Meats is coming out in October. This is another one that is fantastical, a bit strange um, and I think has kind of mythic elements to it uh, and definitely has a kind of more horror vibe I think from as far as I can tell. It's about best friends Anita and Rainey who find refuge by an old sycamore tree within with its neighboring lot of stray dogs who have a mysterious ability to communicate with humans. The girls learn that they are preceded by a generation of dog-headed women and women-headed dogs whose bloodlines bind them together. Anita convinces Rain to become a dog with her, tying a collar of red string around each of their necks to preserve their kinship forever. But when the two girls are separated, Anita sinks into a dream world that only Rain knows how to rescue her from. As Anita's body begins to rot, it is up to Rain to rebuild Anita's body and keep her friend from being lost forever. I think that sounds fascinating. It sounds it sounds really enchanting in a really creepy way, and I'm def I really want to read this one definitely. So I need to find a way to get hold of it. One by a writer I have read from and read from fairly recently is *The Premonition* by Banana Yoshimoto, which has been translated from the Japanese by Ace Yoneda. I read *Kitchen* um, just last month, and I really enjoyed it. It's kind of a warm whimsical but melancholy vibe um, that I felt was really a lovely read. Um, it was very comforting and very I think easy and simple to read but uh, lovely. It's the most it's the easiest thing for me to describe it as um, and I want to read more lovely books. This one is about ya Yayoi who lives with her perfect loving family, something like you'd see in a Spielberg movie. But while her parents tell happy stories of her childhood she is increasingly haunted by the sense that she's forgotten something important about her past. Deciding to take a break, she goes to stay with her mysterious but beloved aunt Chukino, whose strange behaviour includes waking Yayoi at two in the morning to be her drinking companion, watching Friday the 13th repeatedly and throwing away all the things she wants to forget. Living a life without order, Yukino seems to be protecting herself, but beneath this facade, Yayoi starts to recover lost memories and everything she knows about her past threatens to change forever. I think this is another um, short book, it's only 144 pages. Um, I think it will be quite a lovely read and one that I hope to get to. And then the final one for October is Pay As You Go by Esker David Johnson and this one is a little bit sci-fi, a little bit strange. Um, I think it's um, kind of an alternate reality, not like AI, not like VR. I don't know what the, the words I mean are. Like, it's just an old, a novel set in a different world. <laughs> New to town and delusionally confident, Slide imagines himself living in a glossy building with doormen and sweeping views of the skyline. Instead, he's landed in a creaking, stuffy apartment with two roommates, a loping giant who hardly leaves his room, and a weight-obsessed neurotic who keeps no fewer than 47 lamps throughout the house, blazing at all hours. Unwilling to accept this fate, Slide, a barber with an opaque past, embarks on a request for the perfect apartment, pinballing through the sprawling madcap city of Polis and its endless procession of neighbourhoods. As he bounces from fold-out couch to disaster relief tent, falling in with some tough types, Slide begins to realise he's going to have to scratch and claw just to claim a place for himself in this world, let alone a place with an in-unit laundry. And it's described as surreal, biting and teeming with life. Um, so I've enjoyed some more, like, 
surreal satirical books lately like Glory by Noviola Bulawayo and there were definitely others I just can't remember them off the top of my head right now so um, I'm looking forward to trying that hopefully um, soon and this is Esco David Johnson is a Caribbean writer uh, from Trinidad and Spain. Talking about books from November now, the first one is Blackout by Justin Torres, which I believe was just long listed for the National Book Award, um, but it is not out in the UK until November. And it is about two men, young and old, who reckon with their place within queer history. Juan Gay is on his deathbed. He has decided to spend his last days in the palace, a monumental fading institution in the desert, which was an asylum in another lifetime. There, a young man who tends to this dying soul, someone whom one has only met once. As the end approaches, the two trade stories, resurrecting lost loves, lives, mothers and fathers, and their lives are woven in ineluctably, I don't know that word, into a broader story of pathology and oppression. Charged with sifting through one's belonging, a narrator uncovers a copy of Sex Parents, a study in homosexual patterns, its pages blacked out, censors, reduced to poetic dispatches. And as he shifts through the mass manuscript, another story is told, that of Jan Gay, a radical queer anthropologist whose groundbreaking work was co-opted and stifled by the committee she served. And it draws from historical records, screenplays, testimony and image. So it's going to be kind of an experimental form. I think this one sounds like one that I would need the physical copy of uh, rather than ebook or audiobook. Um, but it is one that has been described as erotic and beguiling and intelligent, loving and generally, genuinely subver subversive work by Eleanor Catton um, and it has like huge amounts of praise from all sorts of people um, so I definitely I definitely want to read this one. Next we have like a weird historical fiction which um, sounds right up my street and that is Recital of the Dark Verses by Louise Philippe Fabre translated by Heather Cleary and this is set in 1592. A bailiff and his two assistants arrive at the monastery arrive at the monastery of Ubeda with the secret task of transferring the body of Saint John of the Cross, the great Carmelite poet and mystic who had died the previous year, to his final abode. When they exhume him, they find the body uncorrupted and as fresh as when he died. Recital of dark verses follow the three hapless thieves as they sneak the corpse of Saint John of the Cross from Ubeda to Sir Jovia, trying to not to lose as many pieces trying not to lose too many pieces of his body to his friends and disciples along the way. It is the true story of a heist, a road novel, a coming of age tale and a raunchy slapstick comedy told in careening charismatic prose. Um, a revival of words written more than four century ago and a centering and celebration of their intrinsic queerness. And then the final one for November is Yara by Tamara Faith Berger. Um, and this is another one that has been featured in many a list and is set in the early 2000s. So technically a historical fiction too. Distraught that her teenage daughter is in love with a woman a decade older, Yara's mother sends Yara away from their home in Brazil on a birth rate trip to Israel for Jewish youth. Freed from her increasingly controlling and jealous girlfriend, Yara is determined to forge her own path and follow her desires. But birthright takes a debaucherous turn and Yara, and Yara flees Israel for Toronto, where she is forced to reframe her relationship, exploring the possibility that it might have been abusive. From there she heads from California, where she plays with the line between erotic film and real life. Jara wanders, she tries to keep her head above the water, connecting the dots between the land in which she finds herself and the places she has been and the places she is headed. I love a coming of age story and this one sounds like a really interesting perspective on that um, and I am intrigued as I said. Um, this one is coming out at the end of November. And then the final book on this list is one coming out in December and that is Blues in the Blood by Julian Delmer by Julian Delmar um, and this one sounds like it's going to be slightly um, experimental again in terms of form um, a mixture of like poetry and quite beautiful and evocative in terms of the prose um, and it is an ode to the Mississippi Delta inspired by magical realism so um, I, I do enjoy magical realism <laughs> I do enjoy magical realism in novels, um, and this one, again, is historical fiction. When stifling heat crushed the countryside and threatened the harvest, pervasive injustice ruled the day, and ghostly riders of the Ku Klux Klan spread terror. A panoramic historical and musical portrait, Blues in the Blood, follows a poor young black couple who believe their love for each other will save them from de devastation. Julian Delmer introduces us to a gallery of figures, black, white, Native American, mulatto, landowners, itinerant businessmen, preachers, witches, corrupt politicians, prisoners, bootleggers, and Legba, the voodoo god, master of crossroads, who, like an otherworldly detective, watches over people's destinies. As the story unfolds, a world is reborn, the delta, the birthplace of blues, in which oppressed women and men rediscover the voices and rhythms of their humanity. Sounds 
amazing. Actually, it sounds really, really good. One of the ones I'm the most uh, excited about and hopefully will get to you fairly swiftly. Not my forte, reading books quickly after they come out, but that one just sounds so good. Um, and it reminds me of a book that I read that was about voodoo, um, The Salt Road by Narlo Hopkinson. That one was set in Haiti um, and this one is in the Mississippi Delta. But, so those are all of the, those are the 11 books that I wanted to talk to uh, you about today. Of course there are many more books coming out in the next three months but those were the 11 that intrigued me. Let me know in the comments if there are any that I've missed that you think I would definitely enjoy. I would love to hear that and I hope to, um, and thank you very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week, so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.